Hi, I'm Mike O'Neill, and welcome to Flyboys. Well, it's been well over a year and a half since my last update on my B-10 bomber build, and there's a reason for that long delay. At the end of that last update, I mentioned how the next thing to be done was some major shaping and sanding of the wing. And in a post subsequent to that, I mentioned how I hate sanding. So basically, I hit a wall with regard to sanding on the wing, and I went on to work on a variety of other modeling projects in the meantime. Eventually, I started chipping away at the shaping and sanding, and I recently completed it all to the point where I could start continuing with the rest of the build on the model. About that same time, I realized I had a major issue with the bell crank and pushrod assembly. With regard to the bell crank assembly, I'm not sure how I missed this, but it turns out that I had missed placement of a specific washer in that assembly. And without that washer, it was possible to pull directly vertical on the push rod and it would pop off of the bell crank. Now there's no way this would happen with an in-flight situation, but the fact that the push rod could come off of the bell crank is something that I could not allow to exist on a plane that I wanted to fly safely. So that meant I needed to disassemble the entire bell crank and push rod assembly and install the missing washer. Of course, that was all buried within the wing. And that meant I had to do what I'm calling some open heart surgery on the center of the wing to get to the bell crank assembly. I had to start by cutting off the skin of, or the sheeting that was over that area so I could gain access to the bell crank assembly. And then of course, the nut that was needed to disassemble the whole unit was epoxied on the bottom of the whole assembly underneath the fly the plywood bell crank mount so that meant that i had to physically cut out the entire plywood bell crank mount in order to disassemble it in order to reassemble it with the correct washer installed fortunately that whole cutting and disassembling and reinstalling process went a little bit easier than i might have imagined and i ended up with the correct washer in place the bell crank and push rod securely connected to each other, and then the whole bell crank assembly and plywood mount re into the plane. And then I finally ended my open heart surgery by doing a skin graft and resheating over that area of the wing center section. And then, because it was not as smooth as the original sheeting, I needed to do some filling in order to get that area to be smooth. So it looked pretty nasty by the time I was done, but I felt a lot better about the end result, knowing that the bell crank and the push rod assembly was now firmly installed and nothing was going to go anywhere in flight. Once I got through that little fiasco, I was ready to continue on with the actual build of the model. And the next thing was to insert the wing into the fuselage and then finish the fuselage build around the wing. And that's what I've completed up to this point. I now have a series of still photos, which I'll show and explain the various steps I took during the wing installation and the finishing of the fuselage around the wing. So here we go with that process. These first couple of slides are what the wing looks like now that it's all shaped and sanded. First you're looking at the top of the wing and then you're looking at the bottom of the wing. In this photo you can see what the wing tips look like now that the wing tip blocks have been all shaped and sanded. You can also see what the lead out wire guides look like. I am very pleased with the way these ultimately came out as opposed to when one of them was going through the leading edge of the wing, which you can see the remnants of that also in this photo. Here is a view of the underside center section of the wing, which shows the fuel tank overflow lines and a small patch that had to be installed under one of the fuel tanks. And finally, here is the top center section of the wing with 
two of the fuel tank fill lines visible as well as the center section where the belt crank and push rod assembly is. You can see here where I had to perform the heart surgery on the belt crank that I talked about earlier and ended up having to do a skin graft for the sheeting over that area. So with the wing all shaped and sanded, I was now ready to meet the wing and the fuselage together. And here is an example of how detailed the instructions for this model are. Regarding this step, they simply had two words, install wing. To that end, there were about a dozen angles and reference lines and adjustments that had to be made to get the wing to sit exactly where it needed to be in relation to the fuselage. So I ended up making up this jig that you can see in these photos. My jig ended up being a combination of a foam cradle, a variety of clamps, two builders combination squares, several machinists one, two, three blocks, and various weights along with a variety of reference lines and marks on the balsa itself. I was very satisfied with the way everything came out and I am pleased with the alignment of the wing in relation to the fuselage. With the wing now installed, I can continue on with completing the fuselage structure over the top portion of the wing itself. Here you see the various formers that I had to cut out and install. The tall one, which is former F4, was interesting in that it actually seated down into the wing itself and I had to cut a slot in the top of the wing for it to set into. Here is a top-down view now that all the formers have been installed and what I find interesting is that these formers cover the area of the skin graft from the bell crank repair and that means that in the final model none of that will be visible because it'll all be buried within the fuselage itself. With some additional stringers and finish work I was now completed with the full mating of the wing to the fuselage and completing the basic fuselage structure to encase around the wing. Here's a variety of photos of the completed structure and wing from various angles. With this last photo, I'm starting to get the idea that this thing is starting to look like an airplane. So that's where I am to date on the B-10 bomber build. Next thing up is building and installing the tail feathers on the plane, or as the instructions would say, build tail. Love those instructions. So I'm gonna work next on the tail assembly, and then that'll be the subject of my next update post on the B-10 bomber build. In the meantime, I hope you found this somewhat enjoyable, and thank you for tuning in and watching my update on my B-10 bomber build. Take care.